and welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and really try to explain it in a simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most I'm going to try and tie in to the current school curriculum. So when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. Today I'm going to be talking about the very dangerous topic that is nuclear radiation. I'm going to guide you through the three different types of ionizing radiation. So buckle up, because we're going to learn all about alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. Woohoo! So like I said in my atomic model episode, if one or more outer electrons leaves an atom, then the atom is said to be ionized and becomes a positively charged ion. And this is relevant because the type of radiation we're learning about today is called ionizing radiation. The reason for this is that radioactive substances will release this ionizing radiation from their nucleus. And this radiation causes ionization in other atoms. So ionizing radiation hits other atoms and knocks electrons off in the process and creates positive ions. So these atoms with no overall charge get hit by the radiation, turn into ions and therefore become charged. This process is called ionization and the ionizing power of a radioactive source is all dependent on how easily it can carry out this process. The further the radiation can penetrate before hitting an atom, the less ionizing it is because it's done less damage along the way. That's enough background for now, let me talk you through the three key players when it comes to ionizing radiation. For the first type of radiation, we have alpha particles. Alpha radiation. Now he's the big dog, the main man, the alpha of the pack. Alpha particles are made up of two protons and two neutrons. Does this sound familiar to you? Well, this formation means that alpha particles are helium nuclei. And it also means that alpha particles are big, heavy, and slow. As a result of this, they can't penetrate very far into materials because they're stopped so quickly. Because of their size, you know, all big and sluggish, they bash into lots of atoms, knocking off electrons and ionizing them before they end up slowing down. This means that lots of ions are created and therefore alpha particles are strongly ionizing. And this is all down to their larger size. Alpha particles can only travel like a few centimeters in air and can be absorbed by something as thin as a sheet of paper. Oh, and another thing, they have a positive electric charge and can therefore be deflected by electric and magnetic fields. That's handy. All right, on to number two, the vice captain, the side dish, the second in command, beta radiation. Beta particles are high speed electrons. This means that it's a fast moving electron that's been emitted from the nucleus of an atom. Because it's an electron, beta particles have basically no mass and a charge of minus one. So they're pretty small in size and can travel quite fast. They penetrate moderately far into materials before colliding and are therefore moderately ionizing. Beta particles can travel a few meters in air. Now that is certainly better than alpha and can be absorbed by a sheet of aluminium approximately five millimeters thick. For every beta particle emitted, a neutron in the nucleus has turned into a proton. And lastly, beta particles are negatively charged, so can be deflected by electric and magnetic fields. Now, on to the final contender, the showstopper, the end of the line, the grand finale, gamma radiation. If you've watched my Redshift episode, you'll recognize the name gamma, and that's because gamma rays are a type of EM wave on the electromagnetic spectrum. They're the ones down the end with a really short wavelength. So gamma rays are waves of electromagnetic radiation released by the nucleus. They're kind of the opposite to alpha particles because they have no mass, they are just 
energy. And they can penetrate a long way into materials before they get stopped. Which, if you've noticed the pattern by now, means that they are weakly ionizing. They seem to just pass through without colliding with any atoms. But it's radiation, so we do know that eventually they make some contact and do some damage. Gamma rays can travel a long distance through air and could be absorbed by a thick sheet of lead or meters of concrete. And they have no charge, so they don't get deflected by electric or magnetic fields. The last fact about gamma radiation is that it always happens after an alpha or beta decay. They're never just emitted by themselves. They don't like to be the lone wolf. That's it, everything you need to know about alpha, beta and gamma radiation. So it's kind of a scale, starting with alpha being the largest and the most ionizing, through to beta, which is smaller and moderately ionizing, all the way to gamma, which has literally zero mass and is the least ionizing. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like and subscribe and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I'll try to have a video for you.